Alrighty. Hi, I'm Patty Upton. This is my 1966 CJ5 Jeep christened the Sandship Discovery. She's done something no other Jeep has done or can do. She has a Guinness Book of Record for the first all land crossing of the Darien Gap of Panama and Colombia. That area between the two countries that where the Pan American Highway has not been completed, most likely isn't going to complete it in my lifetime and probably not in my daughter's lifetime. Um, She's traveled around the world. The goal was to take one American-made vehicle around the world on a north-south course, all on land except for the South Atlantic. That was to be the only legitimate water barrier. So it was tires on the ground from Huda Bay, Alaska to the tip of South America, hence the all-land crossing of the Darien Gap. We shipped to Africa, wheels on the ground, all the way to Gambik, Norway. That's quite the adventure. Now, the Darien Gap was that was numerous attempts to make that, right? Correct. My husband had set this goal years and years ago. He tried in 19, late 1975, started the crossing in 1976, driving a 72 Ford F-250. Totally overloaded. <laughs> Looked great, but he had, like you said, he carried every spare part imaginable, but everything that broke he didn't have. So that was, and that one, unfortunately, that's the, the hard heartbreaking one is a man was shot and killed on that one and nobody knows why how or anything else it, to our knowledge it was never solved we assume it was a native their weapons are old and they're very careless with them so anyway that that put an end to that trip he started again in 1970s late 1976 early 1977 driving a brand new cj7 jeep made it through the gap in 49 days but he did about 12 miles, lashed to some dugout canoes up through the swamp because the rains were coming and he didn't want to get caught in the swamp during the rains. It wasn't an all land crossing. A couple of weeks later, that point became moot when he drove that one over a cliff. The road turned, he didn't, and the Jeep went over a cliff and he said as the headlight, headlights flipped end for end, he made plans for his next expedition. The goal was to take one American aid vehicle, not a series of them started again in 79 driving a brand new cj5 that one was again a total loss was in the daring gap of panama and colombia had a disagreement with a park official colombian park official and that one was lost to the the park it was left cabled to a tree on the cacarica river so this was the fourth attempt and this is the one that made it this is a 19 like i said 66 cj5 he started june 15 1984 at pudo bay we finished at Gambik, Norway on July 4th, had a finish on the American holiday, um, 19, uh, eight, yeah, 1989, just over five years. Five years of traveling around the world. That's yes. incredible. That, um, yeah, that's absolutely incredible to do, it, especially such a utilitarian vehicle and as it's, well. It's basically, I mean, he's modified it, yes. Yeah. He cut the roof, raised it four inches because he's six foot four. He had to be able to see out the windshield. <laughs> He put um, larger tires and wheels on it, yeah. didn't change the running gears, put a four-speed transmission in, and as a result, lots of traction, and as a result of all that, lots of broken axles. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, engines uh, basically stock. The only thing he changed is he put headers on it. It's a V6 Dauntless, uh, 225 cubic inch. Um, put headers on it, electric fuel pump, a water fuel separator. That's it. So how did you guys sleep? Like this is a small vehicle. Where did you guys sleep in tents or we, were? No, we could sleep inside. Okay. Believe it or not. Um, Lauren, as I said, he's six foot four. It was not the most ideal or comfortable <laughs> for me in the Darien Gap. I slept inside all the time. Right. The seats fold forward, and it's hard to see. I'll go this way. Maybe you can go in over the top. Yeah. This. Um, okay, so a little. Uh, thing. And then there's two boards that are narrower than full. Yeah. They come out and they lay right across here. So you gotcha. end up with one big L-shaped sleeping platform. Yeah. Okay. And uh, for him to sleep in there, he had to shove his head in that corner and his <laughs> in this corner. Uh, but through the gap, uh, I had mosquito netting over all the windows and doors. I'd leave the doors open with the mosquito netting. But the rack on top comes off. You'll see this end is threaded. Yeah. And it threads into here, each pole. And then there's a um, nut welded on the bottom of the pole yeah and watch your sound here there's two nothing's light <laughs> wonder why we're overloaded there's two legs that are totally independently adjustable yeah 
uh, they screw into that nut on the bottom of that pipe out here. And then it's about a three and a half foot wide by seven foot long platform bed. He would sleep out here, but also that's where we would sit. Uh, we didn't have, at that time they didn't, I always said they didn't have these fancy chairs. Yeah. But then I think, well, maybe they did. We just didn't have the internet to find out they did. So <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, we just sat on the table to eat dinner or talk or yeah. make plans or whatever. And then at night he'd sleep outside and I'd, I'd sleep inside. Well, that's quite an adventure. Like say five years to, to try, basically yeah, travel around the world yes. and, and yeah, to live out of this little vehicle. It's uh, definitely a lot different than a lot of the overlanding things that you sure. see these yeah, days. Well, and you know, like I said, none of this was available at, yep. or if it was, it was a mystery to us. Yep. And this was a carpenter and a secretary doing this. <laughs> and we didn't have sponsorship. We didn't have big bucks. We had our savings. And this is what we wanted to do was travel. My yep. husband, I joined on. It was my husband's goal, but I joined on originally as a photographer. Um, my job was phased out due to the Panama Canal U.S. treaties, so I thought, well, I can go full time and yep. join full time. Um, pulled our money, and we just made it work. I yep. mean, that's that's the story of life. If it's something you really want, you you can figure a way to make it work. Yeah, exactly. We uh, I interviewed a couple. Uh, young couple a couple weeks ago and they traveled from Vernon here in British Columbia all the way down to Argentina. They had to go, you know, around the Panama Canal, but same thing, it was basically a stock vehicle and yeah. just took nine months and sure. just absolutely loved their adventure, yeah, right? We, so I had I joined the trip in Panama, so I had never done Pudo Bay to Panama. Okay, yeah. And here many years ago, we, well, back in 07, we bought a Dodge 3500, eight foot bed, crew cab, I don't know why we needed so much room, but anyway. <laughs> um, so one summer we took several weeks and we drove up to Prudhoe Bay yep. and so I've seen that and then one winter we live in uh, Idaho and we'd always try to get out in the winter we drove from Idaho to Panama and that was a stock vehicle there was absolutely yep. well we put a big bumper on it I said I want something that's either going to knock a moose or a taxi out of the way <laughs> so, <laughs> um, other than that there was nothing done to it we yep. weren't going off road uh, some of the roads you had to be careful because they were more pot than hole than or potholes than road yeah, yeah. Um, in in Central America but on a whole it's yeah you could take your family car yeah. and do it it's not that it cannot be done it's just that unless you want to go through the Darien Gap that's your only thing and there are now companies that uh, cater to people that yeah. want to do this and ship around there yeah yeah and uh, Right now, I don't think the Darien Gap is politically savvy to go through. No, it's but, a little uh, bit uh, dangerous right yeah. now, for sure. So, yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Patty. Uh, to our listeners, if you Google Patty Upton, she's been on a number of uh, podcasts and uh, videos as well lately. And uh, the story, you know, we could stand here and talk about this all afternoon, right? But, you know, the sun's roasting and, you know, I want to get you back into the shade. So, but yeah, Google Pat, Patty Upton, U-P-T-O-N. And she's got some incredible stories about going through the Darien Gap as well as traveling through Africa and up into Europe. So once again, thank you very much, Patty. Thank I appreciate you. it. Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> so we got the shackle there, the shovel, shackles, um, or the, the uh, snatch block yeah. there as well, yeah. uh, pickaxe, the and the axe down there, and then we got more snatch blocks over on that side. Oil. Built a wrench. <laughs> and the fan belt sitting up on top of the radiator. <laughs>